Many people think that Maslow's hierarchy of needs stopped with self-actualization. And that's not actually true. He had another piece that was on top of self-actualization, and that was self-transcendence. He just didn't publish it widely before he passed away. It was something he started working on towards the end, and so he published the hierarchy of needs before he finished his work on self-transcendence. He was one of the first people really to track flow and to track some of the more interesting and advanced altered states that human beings can get to, things that you would find the terminology really similar to things that you've heard that heard advanced meditators describe. And so he was working on self-transcendence and he just didn't publish it. So there's actually another level on top of that hierarchy of needs. And so when I think of human psychology, I really think of human psychology as a spectrum. And it's not a, it's not a, a series of, of islands or unique locations. It's really sort of a spectrum. And on one end, you have what I call areas that require human support. So these are, this is when people are facing you know, severe stress, severe anxiety, and depression. And then in the middle is what I call the human condition. And so that is loneliness, happiness, connection, empathy. The human condition is where we learn how to deal with our first heartbreak and the first time that we fall in love. The human condition is where we deal with sadness and betrayal and loss. Basically all of the things that happen to you as you grow up through life, the full spectrum of human emotion, that is the human condition. And there's, a, you know, there's an infinite number of songs on the radio and poems and art that's about the human condition. So that's there. And then on this other side, which I think really maps to self-transcendence and Maslow's later work, is the part of the people in the world who are really pushing on human psychology and what are the limits where are our boundaries what is the frontier of human psychology and I think a lot of direction that we get is from the contemplative communities around the world who really have been exploring and pushing on human psychology for as long as humans have been organized and and, and pushing on what it is what does it mean to be human the other day I talked to a guy who now has three Guinness World Book Records on endurance sports and he meditates the entire time. And he just, he just swam the English Channel in a Speedo. <laughs> and he meditated the whole time. So, you know, people are using mind training, meditation and other things to push into abilities that Right now, today, one could say are limited to the few, but with the advent of things like transformative technology, there's the ability, the possibility, the potentiality of these extraordinary states, abilities, and conditions to be available to a much wider group of people. And the reason why I think it's relevant is, you know, what would make it significant, relevant, and actionable is that, <laughs> is that when I think about the world today and the challenges facing mankind, I don't think the problems are technical. I think they're human. So last summer, I went to Singularity University. I took time out of everything that I'm doing to go into their graduate studies program, and it was a fantastic program. I love Singularity University. And the way that the program is set up is that it's this 10-week program, and you're in class from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. every night, and there's just a parade, really, of some of the most extraordinary people on the planet working either in exponential technology, so AI, robotics, 3D printing, bioinformatics, everything you can imagine, and people who are on the front lines 
of the challenges facing mankind, like the people who are working on the water problems, the people who are teaching in the refugee camps, the people who are trying and working legitimately, sleeves rolled up on the ground. The thinking around SU is it's the place where exponential technologies are applied to the grand global challenges that are facing mankind and, and that being the purpose and the use for them. So for me, while I was there, my questions always centered on what is your biggest challenge to what you're trying to accomplish. And the answers were not technical. The answers were human. It was about fear, one's own or the people around you. So they were all human problems. And it was interesting to spend the entire summer there because you definitely walk away with the feeling that the, the problems aren't technical. We always figure it out. We got a man on the moon and we have alternative energy and there's so many other things that are happening. So fast, change is coming hard and fast. Just, you know, from year to year, if you see the difference in the quality of the robots and the robotic competitions, it's dramatic year after year after year. And so really, the challenge facing mankind is human. It's can we get past? the fear, aggression, anxiety, stress. Can we get past that inner dialogue that takes us off track, either makes us miss out on game day, not perform, makes us unable to create collaborations and cooperate with other people? Because we do have very real challenges as a species, and the only way that we're going to solve them is together. We have some very serious conversations that we have to have about everything from genetic engineering to, you know, what do we do with a lot of the technologies that are coming online, uh, whether, you know, whether it's algorithmic accountability or a variety of things. And so the way that I see my work and the way that I see transformative technology is that if we can use the technology to understand ourselves better, if we can use the technology to start to deliver and help people mimic the experiences of meditation so that people can be calmer, happier, understand themselves better, silence the critical voices in the, inside themselves that stir up a lot of trouble, and if they can also connect to other people better, then we can get busy doing the work that needs to be done to create the future that we'd like to have for ourselves and for our children and our communities on the planet. So that's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing.